Good morning, everyone. So we are starting now with the, the, the uh, morning talks here. And we are really going to talk about the inside-outside library this, uh, this morning with four, with four, uh, four speakers. And the first speakers will address this thing very uh, nicely because the question is, well, do we really need a library? Because if we, the question is, are we really uh, going for the needs of the we we of the researcher or are we only uh, pile up services and to do this battle we have on our uh, right hand side jane stevenson jane stevenson is an archivist she's from an archives hub uh, manager and, and she's from the, the university of manchester and on our left hand side we have lucas costa lucas costa is a library systems coordinator at the, at the library of the university of amsterdam so let's rumble interested in madness. Madness? Madness, yeah. I wasn't sure where to look. What, what kind of madness? Well, you know, the, the band, the band, madness. I wasn't sure where to look. Ah, that band. Uh, let me think. Um, madness. madness, yeah. Madness. That's the one. <laughs> madness. Okay, man. Madness. Oh. I think uh, madness, it's, uh, that's, that's where madness lies. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Maybe in scar or regular. <coughs> okay. So, um, what? what did other people buy? What do you mean? Well, you know, like people who bought madness, what other sort of things did they buy? How should I know? Well. I just work here. Okay, okay, okay. Well, what did they think of it? I don't know. They didn't bother to come back and tell me that. What? <sighs> Nothing at all? Good? Bad? Excited? Disappointed? Anything? I could really couldn't tell that now. I oh, okay. I just work here. Just, just, I told you so. Oh, well, I'm quite interested in this CD. Oh. But the thing is, I only really want tracks Two, five, and eight. I've got all the others. You can't do that. It's all or nothing. Mm. <sighs> you stupid well, customer. How much is it? Well, look at the back. It says 10 euro. But I'm sure I've seen this for eight euros in another shop. And I only you know, want three tracks. I only want the three tracks. You know what? You're going to go to the other shop, and here's your track three. Ah. And two. And what was it? 25 hero. Thank you very much. Change. Oh. Yes. Hello. <laughs> it's a library. Library. Hello. Yes. Can I help you? I'm interested in madness. Madness? Like in popular culture, you know. I wasn't sure where to start. Well. I kind of, I'm kind of looking for an overview, I think. It's for my first research project. Okay, that's interesting. Yes. So, well, we have an overview of uh, publications on subject in ma madness. Um, but you might be a bit more specific. 
Um, did you mean like anger or mental illness? Uh, I hadn't really thought about it like that. Haven't thought about defining it. Mm, probably both. I'm not sure. Why? You know, there is this. Uh, we have this Jewish decimal system code, and it's uh, there is 362.2, mental and emotional illnesses and disturbances. Maybe you can go have a look there and see if, if there's anything there for you. 362.2. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll um, I'll have a think about that. Um, but um, oh, maybe I can just search the catalogue. Yes, nice yes, and easy. yes, yes. So you can search the catalogue, but um, <laughs> you might find something. But also, we have also our own local repository. But, this, but it has it has books. It might be in the catalogue, but if it's an article. It's not in the catalogue, but it might be in one of the e-journals or the databases. Or if you're lucky, then it's harvested in our Primo Central uh, Index. <laughs> but not everything is there. Uh, so you might want to ki kind of, you know, find any, and there's WorldCode and Google, of course, but I, have, I didn't say that as a, as a librarian. Okay. Um, um, <laughs> I might have to have a think about that. I'm not too sure. Um, but what about research, you know, research publications? Yes, that, yes, that, yes. That'll be good. Yes, so all these, uh, all these publications, these books and articles, most of them are uh, re results of research projects. Oh, well, that's good. Well, well, what I was thinking is, it would be good to have a look at the, the data, the data sets that the research is based on, like, so I can get a, a kind of overview. Data sets? Yeah, you, you, know, you, know, you know, a kind of approach where I can look at everything and get, get, get a good overview of everything. Well, you know, we only have publications like articles and books. Oh. Okay. Um, oh, um, but, but what about... Ar archives, they'd be good, yeah. Yes, yes, we have archives. Good, okay, archives. Uh, so, so I can kind of, um, I, can, I can search, search for things in the archive? Things? No, no, you have to go to the top level, a collection level, and then you need to kind of drop down through, uh, let's, there are some very specific terms for that, but that's, you know, that's the way archives are structured. Okay. I can help that. Um, okay, but maybe I could take pictures of them and then I can look at them I at my leisure later on. I don't think that's maybe, f but you have to fill in a, a question, a, 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 a mm -hmm. forum to ask the permission to, oh. to and specify the, the purpose of that. You know. Oh, okay. Um, well, well, can I look at any of them on my iPad? Surely. Well, mo we have some of them digitized, but most of them just have paper objects, so you have to f find them somewhere in the, in the, in the, in the depot. No, oh. I'm sorry. Okay. But you know what? Um, we, have we have a number of uh, library skills and database uh, uh, courses and trainings and, and tutorials. I, I can give you a couple of brochures. Here you are. <laughs> and uh, then you can, you can f li find out what you like. And then come back and see. <laughs> Oops. Uh, yes. Okay. Oh, actually, I'm quite interested in this book. That book, not the other one. I'm quite interested <laughs> in this book. Um, I'm quite interested in this book, but actually, I only really want chapter four. I'm not interested in any, in any, any of the others. It's just chapter four that's relevant for my research. You can't do that. It's all or nothing. Well, I don't want to carry a whole book around. I mean, uh, if I'm looking at a PDF or anything else, I can just get the bit I want. I mean, it's just silly having to have the whole thing when all I want is one chapter, this, one this? chapter out of the book. That's all I want. Here you are. Now, go on. Are you happy now? I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, now for the serious part. We're not finished. Okay, um, well, what we've tried to talk about is the, is the divide, but of course, that, that was somewhat imaginary I, I, in that we all know that researchers don't actually go into libraries and use library services, really. No, that's <laughs> actually, that's, uh, they have their own uh, thing. So there is this gap, apparently, between information professionals trying to 
serve the best as they can, that's through uh, presenting the, their collections and the, the needs of the researchers, and everybody's interested in that. So we have uh, kind of identified five issues based on what you've seen before where there is a gap. So researchers, they are actually interested in information of uh, all types of resource or source of sources, regardless of format, like uh, anything, you know, we've seen artifacts, archives, books, music, anything with data. And libraries and archives, we tend to provide all these things in, spe in or form a specific database catalogs, like uh, only articles or only books. And we, have, we, we, we try to integrate everything with this discovery tool, but may it doesn't really always work to the, to the for the needs of the researchers because they're kind of interested in the discipline-specific stuff, and, and there, are, there are a lot of differences between these disciplines. Also, they want to search and find anything, regardless of where things are held. So they want to search the world, whereas libraries and archives, either you have to go to the, the building or to the specific web interfaces of that specific mm -hmm. library or archive where you can find a, a limited number of items from their own local collections or uh, from subscri subscribed content if it's, it's, it's licensed material. Now it's up to you. So uh, one of the other things uh, that, that we were thinking about that we think is quite important is, is around language and the use of language. And really with the interfaces that we provide, language shouldn't be a barrier. And in fact, it's something that the researchers shouldn't, shouldn't have to think about at all. It should be kind of quite obvious to them. Whereas we're very fond of using our own language, which we're doing here at this conference a great deal. But we have a tendency to kind of translate that through to End user, end user interfaces if we're not careful. And when I was thinking about this, I took really not very long to go to, in my case, I went and had a look at a few archival interfaces being an archivist, but I think it's the same with libraries and museums as well. And um, I just took an assortment of some of the sorts of things that you come across. And these are just from end user interfaces, from random interfaces. And archivists are very fond of having things like, which level do you want to search? Would you like to search the FONDS level? Do you want to look for manuscripts or do you want to look for archives? Well, I'm, do people really know? Do you want to sort by relevance? What does that really mean? And my favorite, ZWeb does not have a parent. <laughs> um, so, oh. you know, you might feel a bit dismayed, but you might not be exactly sure what that means. Um, I mean, funnily enough, even the top one, which kind of looks fairly reasonable, find archival materials, there can be some, different, some difficulties around what people actually understand by that. So it's quite a difficult area, and I think it's something that we need to work on. Um, and I think we really need to be thinking about using the words that, that, that researchers, that users use when they're thinking about things, that they think about the real things that they're interested in the subjects, the names, the, the dates, the events. And we do have a tendency to kind of introduce our language into what they're looking at a lot of the time. And similarly, in terms of language, when you're thinking about searching, now, you know, we know that people really want to search however they want to search. They want to use their own search terms. We, we love controlled vocabularies, and they have their place, but we, again, we have a tendency to kind of try to push users towards understanding our vocabularies. Now, I wonder if anyone can tell me what all these terms have in common. Nobody. You'll earn an enormous prize if you can, because I don't think you'll be able to. Um, Aid, you're not allowed to comment, though, because you might know. <laughs> um, OK, so all these terms are terms that people have used searching my service, which is an aggregation of archives in the UK. So they come to the search box, and these are terms that people have put in to search by. And I know this because these came up in a survey that we did, a survey of users where we were finding out about how they found using the Archives Hub. And what these all have in common is they didn't understand the results that they got. They didn't understand why the results were relevant to them. Now, I can look at those terms, and I know why the results weren't relevant, although actually it's quite hard to put into words to 
to understand how archivist catalog and how relevance works with archives and things like that. Um, but it was a really good thing to do because it made me think, okay, well, are there ways that we can then present them with something that's useful? You know, what you get might not seem relevant, but it could be because of this, it could be because of that, and, and try and direct them somewhere that's more kind of helpful. So the last uh, issue that we, we found out is re relationships. So researchers like to see the relationship between all kinds of information. So not only their research communities and research articles and publications and, and projects, but also the, the uh, in the topic. So for instance, if we go back to the popular uh, matters in popular culture, uh, this is these are all about movies. So this is Jack Nicholson uh, featuring in The Shining, and you have uh, Robert De Niro in Taxi Driver. You may have seen them before. And to find out what the relationships are between these, there is a direct relationship, which is not about madness, but all the other movies, uh, people playing in movies, they have something to do with madness and, 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 and strangeness. And, and, and so this could be an interesting uh, topic for researcher. But in uh, in our uh, collections, these relations, the relations are not uh, readily available. We, we do have, uh, in, for instance, library catalogs. This is from the Library of Congress. There are certain relationships, but very limited. So on, on, on subject, you get a, n a number of uh, publications based on a specific subject or uh, related by author or person. But these are all kind of focused uh, on, their, on the own, uh, their own collections or the subscribed content. Um, basically only within their own systems and not uh, globally. Um, the, uh, another a new, a new st uh, step further in relationships is this is the screenshot from uh, our Primo uh, uh, imp implementation with BX, which does recommendations, so the relationships based on usage, uh, usage, uh, usage statistics. This is a, a step further, which is interesting. But that's, that's uh, 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 mostly the way it is, and uh, that's it, sh it should be more. So, what have we? What, ki what kind of solutions can we offer? Yeah. So we were thinking about the fact <coughs> that you know, in, in our skit, the pusher, but the information professional uh, needs to understand the researcher more, and, and and not the other way around. And we still have a tendency to think that researchers should understand the way we c we work and understand the way that we kind of operate. Um, and I just wanted to show a few slides from um, some surveys that we've carried out. We carry out annual surveys. And it's interesting with the surveys that I do, every year I go back to them and I tend to revise the questions. And if anything, I make the questions more fundamental, really trying to get to the bottom of, of, of understanding users. And one of the questions I asked in the last um, survey was just, well, why did you come to our service today? You know, what, what, what were you doing that led you to our service? And, um, you know, some people were looking for archives, you know, weren't sure where to look, they were looking for archives. They might be um, using a search engine and looking for archives. But a significant number of people carry out a search on a search engine, and they're looking for a subject of some description, and, and, and they don't know that they're going to come to the archives hub, or, or whatever kind of library and archive service it might be. So they're suddenly kind of catapulted into <coughs> this environment. And you know, we need to start thinking about ways that we can make that bio environment more instantly understandable to people so they can think, oh yes, this, this is relevant to what I want. Um, another question that I've started asking people now, this was a really interesting one because I started to realize that our service is called the Archives Hub. Do you want to search for archives? Well, I thought that was a fairly straightforward question. But actually, when you start to talk to researchers about what they understand by the term archives, they understand quite a few different things by that term. Now, the majority of people in this survey said, yes, we understand the same thing as archivists think. You know, it's collections of materials that have been preserved and made accessible for research. But a significant number of people say, well, it's, well, it's any type of resource. You know, mm, I think it's unpublished materials. I think it's anything, anything old, you know. So actually, what we find is they're searching and they have expectations that aren't the same as what we're going to provide for them. Similarly, um, it's very easy to think with something like archives or maybe with subject-based um, libraries that you have a certain type of researcher. Maybe they're in a certain subject, something like, you know, for archives it would be history. But actually, 
there's, there's a real kind of expanse of different subjects, so it's a very interdisciplinary thing, so you have to think of the different subjects that people might be coming from. And finally, something that slightly undermined my expectations is when I asked people whether they'd rather consult digital archives or paper-based archives, in fact, over half said they'd be equally willing to consult both. So even though quite a lot of people would prioritize digital, in our survey, 35%, it's still the case that a lot of researchers very much value the paper-based materials. So back to the music. So um, can we see some parallels between developments in the, in the music industry and in research in the research industry? Uh, you, you in, in, in music, you see all these uh, sites and, pr and, and platforms. This one is uh, Music Brains. You can search for uh, the band Madness. You see all kind of information collected together. Um, for instance, uh, there is a Wikipedia article about, about the, the band Madness pull in. You can search on specific types of output. Uh, all kinds of other relationships here, links to other sites. And also an interesting um, tab. There's a relationships tab, so you can see all kinds of other, st other stuff there. Um, there is also a very interesting, a very recent uh, platform it's a clickable map of musical genres and it's that they put genres together that, that, are, that are kind of linked together and you can click on for instance here you see ska if you click on that you see all the artists and there is our madness and this is all rela relational based on, on all kinds of stuff so these are very different views on on uh, on the music environment um, even Google, if you search for, ma for Madness, you get the Google Graph on the right side, all kinds of information about this band is pulled together from different sources and presented as an integrated view. What about research? If we, if we look at the parallel for the research in the world. Yeah, okay, so... Yeah. <laughs> so we need to think you about... Know, <laughs> you know this. Was I supposed to say something there? <laughs> so we need to think about the researchers and what they're yeah. thinking about. So this is, uh, you know, maybe you know this scene from uh, the Monty Python movie, uh, The Holy Grail. So there is this bridge keeper, this might be an uh, information professional. He asks the, the visitor three questions, and if they have a, a, a wrong answer, they're thrown into the abyss. So he, he asks them, what is your quest? And of course, in this case, it's the Holy Grail. But if he says, uh, what's your favorite color? Uh, we all know what happens. <laughs> what's the holy grail? So that's the question. We were thinking about this when we were preparing for this. Well, kind of, is there a holy grail? Is there something we can say at the end of our talk that says, well, this is what we need to be doing? Um, and maybe it's not so much a case of a holy grail, but maybe there are certain... <laughs> when somebody else is doing it, it's quite hard. <laughs> things, there are certain things we need to think about. And actually, there are, uh, there, there are some environments that we can learn from, environments that are a bit more integrated and that are working for researchers. Yeah, so, uh, so like this, in the music uh, industry, uh, you see all kinds of platforms like Mendeley. Uh, that has used to be popular, but maybe not so much now as since the Elsevier purchase. But, uh, it's, it integrates all kinds of things that researchers need, like other platforms like Bipsonomy, Figshare, this no, not only for data sharing, but also for other, other types of sharing, all kinds of disciplines and, and material. On Zenodo, that was uh, pre presented in the open air workshop in the pre-conference here, and all kinds of stuff. And even Google Scholar is very popular. So looking at uh, the parallel between the music business, so all these music uh, platforms and sites are not uh, initiated by the, by the music shops you see all these music, sh music, music shops disappear. As a matter of fact, so only last week in the Netherlands, there's this fa very famous uh, music shop chain, Free Record Shop, which had 170 shops, and it's existed, I think, for 40 years. It had to close down all of a sudden. And this w is this also going to happen with libraries and archives? But, you know, all, all these, all these, all these uh, researcher platforms are not initiated by libraries or archives, but ex external by other parties. There are a couple of um, uh, pilots and initiatives, also of course, in, in the from from within the, li the library world. So this is actually uh, from our own, own Primo uh, instance in uh, Amst in University of Amsterdam. I'm doing a little pilot to connect uh, articles from our own uh, local repository 
to uh, not to our own local research information system because that's not open, but to the national research portal Narcis, which Peter from Bohemian showed you yesterday in his uh, in his opening talk, where you can get information from a specific author of an article about other kinds of research and publications he or she is involved in. Uh, it, I would, it would have been better if I could have uh, RDF to embed stuff into, into Primo, but uh, there is no RDF, uh, unless for a very specific subset, which is a very in interesting s stuff here. In, in this Narcissus portal, for a very specific subject, there was a pilot. It's always a pilot that never gets to into production. But they aggregate anything, everything together. So this looks like this research object that Herbert von der Sample talked about yesterday. It's an aggregation and it links publications and data files, etc., together. This has RDF, but it's only very limited. And there is, maybe you've heard of the Vivo open source tool that connects all the research communities of a local research institute together. Th these are all focused on the research community itself, so not on topics. So, um, yeah, so we've got this kind of vision, we've got this very exciting idea, which she's clearly very excited about that um, one day everything's going to be connected, everything's going to be open, and we've had presentations on these kind of ideas, information flowing freely. Um, but this is what things often end up feeling like, and, and, and it, often, it often ends up feeling like we all kind of end up adding our own little bits of wires to this kind of mess, um, and so we've got all these kind of silos and all these different information flows. Um, and actually, this is also quite a good kind of metaphor for the fact that I think that what we need to be doing is being a bit, maybe a bit braver and bolder with these initiatives and these projects where we're actually trying to sort this out and, and, and make information more open and more connected. Uh, you know, so I've worked quite a lot on a linked data project um, over the last three or four years. And you know, I, I, I trained as an archivist. I mean, I learned about Latin and diplomatic and land law and historical sources, I did not learn about, you know, kind of tags and codes and linked data and that kind of thing. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Um, and so, <laughs> it's very distracting. Sorry. And, so, and so the thing is, sometimes you've just got to kind of take the plunge a bit and have a go and, and, and go out of your comfort zone. But but, but take your data and think differently about it and think about actually how you can start connecting it with other data. And you know, it might not be perfect and you might make mistakes, but at least we're taking things in the right direction and actually trying to, to bring things together in a way that is gonna make things more connected. And, um, uh, oh, I was supposed to say that before the slide. I didn't, ex I didn't expect a Spanish Timing, position. timing is everything. Um, <laughs> so we were thinking about um, our chief kind of weapons, you know, what we need for this. Um, and and and, uh, <laughs> and and we thought that, uh, amongst other things, two really important things are kind of education and information literacy. So yeah, education <laughs> is um, no, it's, fine. it's too late now. Education is all about really changing our mindset, and and I guess I think that's a really fundamental thing: changing the way ways we think being a bit braver, being a bit bolder, thinking about things in different ways, trying things out, um, I think that's really gonna help. Yeah, so looking back to all these um, information, uh, library skills, literacy trainings that uh, libraries and archives offer, maybe we should just shift the focus completely around and start thinking about information literacy for information professionals. So learn to think like a researcher. And it's only a... Uh, one step. One step and that's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Questions? Uh -huh. Questions? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you may dance. Yeah, now, now we've got five minutes to dance. Star. <laughs> Hello. Thank no. you, uh, Jane and Lucas. So are there oh. any questions left here? <laughs> because we have uh, some... <laughs> we, don't, we, we don't have any <laughs> answers. <laughs> no questions. You have... Booing, maybe. No, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah.